Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from the WR Chess Masters uh, 2023. Sorry about calling, calling it VR Chess Masters, I have no idea why I do this. Uh, but it's Levon Aronian versus Yanni Pomnishi. Jan will play uh, his World Chess Championship against uh, Ding Liren very, very soon. And uh, it's uh, very nice to see um, uh, if, if he's uh, in form and he if he's, uh, well, just uh, playing good games here or is, or is he preparing and uh, saving his main preparation for the actual World Chess Championship match. And in the previous video, uh, you've seen what Levon can do, you, you've seen what he did to Magnus Carlsen, and um, that was six years ago, and you will uh, see that he still plays uh, incredible, incredible attacking chess, and that his games are always to, um, uh, there to be marveled at. So let's check it out, uh, Levon with the white pieces opens with pawn to d4, we have knight to f6, we have pawn to c4, e6, knight to f3, and d5, Nepo goes for the queen's gambit declined. Uh, knight to c3 and bishop to e7. We have bishop to f4, bishop to g5 is still the more, more popular idea, but bishop to f4 I believe is the uh, more modern approach. Uh, we have castles e3 and now pawn to c5, uh, challenging the uh, white center. We have d captures on c5, bishop captures and c captures on d5. We have knight captures, knight captures, e captures and bishop to d3. So the main line of the Harvitz attack, uh, nothing new, n new here, both of them know this very well. We have bishop to b4 check by Nepo and now knight to d2. King to f1 and king to e2 are also very much playable moves here and they have been played before. Uh, Levon prefers knight to, e, uh, knight to d2. We have knight to c6 and now uh, Levon castles. We have bishop to e7 by Nepo. The bishop is no longer useful on this diagonal. Uh, and now there are a couple of games that reach this position. a3 is a non-move. Uh, rook to c1 a non-move. Queen b3 a non-move. Uh, but here, uh, sorry, um, uh, knight to b3 a non-move. But here we have queen to b3 and it is now as of move 13 that we have a completely new game. So let's see what uh, Nepo had in mind here. Bishop to f6, uh, we have a3 and now queen to e7. Uh, we have rook 8 to c1, uh, preparing to double up on the c file, and bishop to e6. Of course, uh, Nepo also wants to put his rooks on the c file. We have queen to b5. You don't want to uh, see uh, a move like d4 on the board, so queen to b5. We have rook 8 to c8, and now rook to c2. We have pawn to a6, challenging the queen, and now queen to b6. And now Nepo just goes queen to d7. He needs to free up the, this diagonal for the bishop to kick away uh, the, the white queen. Uh, we have knight to b3 and now comes bishop to d8 and here uh, something really weird happened during the game and notice that this is the first time that Nepo plays bishop to d8 so he attacks Levon's queen queen back to c5 with bishop to e7 queen to b6 and now he repeats bishop to d8 notice that this is the second time bishop to d8 uh, appears on the board uh, queen to c5 bishop to e7 again attacking the queen and queen to b6 and here Levon played queen to b6 he paused the clock and he called the arbiter uh, he wanted to, to, to claim a threefold repetition but as uh, uh, bishop to d8 only happened uh, twice and this is the the moment where we started repeating moves uh, and then here Nepo has to play bishop to d8 in order for it to be threefold repetition so it wasn't threefold repetition and uh, Nepo was not interested in a draw and uh, that's why he played pawn to g5 and okay you can't be very happy when you see a move like this especially when you're playing against someone like Nepo uh, but okay, bishop to g3, uh, bishop to d8. It's interesting how uh, Nepo declines the, 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 the repetition, but he plays uh, uh, the repetition uh, <laughs> just enough times for it not to be a repetition of moves, and then he throws in another move. And now he repeats it, queen to c5, bishop to e7, queen b6, and now f5. Uh, preparing pawn to f4, so pawn to f3, uh, freeing up the f2 square for the bishop, you could also play pawn to f4, uh, Levon prefers pawn to f3, bishop to d8, again, Nepo goes for the sort of repetition, queen to c5, bishop to e7, queen to b6, bishop to d8, queen to c5, and only now pawn to f4. Uh, this way, uh, probably... Uh, Nepo uh, gets closer to, to uh, move 40, so he, uh, uh, they, uh, he wants to reach time control, he wants to be granted additional time, uh, but also sometimes players will just do this. They repeat moves without actually having any sort of um, uh, hopes or, or ideas of uh, repeating the position, sort of, a, uh, you know, just to get into your head. It's sort of like a, like, like a Russian school of chess thing. So E captures on F4, G captures on F4, Bishop to F2, and 
now again bishop to e7 queen to b6 and bishop to d8 Nepo just uh, toying uh, toying with uh, uh levon here queen to c5 and now bishop to f6 it's not that black is better here he, he's just being weird uh we have rook f to c1 now levon finally triples up on the c file and queen to g7 now you have to be very very careful uh, careful here as the queen now occupies the semi-open g file queen to d6 opening up the the c file for the rooks also putting pressure on the bishop here and now rook c to e8 taking care of both threats now the bishop is nicely defended and you can move your knight so you don't have to worry about rook captures on c8 and here there are many moves uh levon could go for uh, for example bishop captures on a6 is one of them uh, because if uh pawn recaptures then the c6 knight will hang uh, but then you have to worry about ideas like bishop e5 then the queen moves then you play rook to c8 now uh the this is actually a threat because the knight will be defended and once you move the bishop then even ideas like bishop captures on b2 so you you grab a pawn but you also will have to give back the pawn so instead rook to e1 again goes after the bishop and here nepo plays knight to e5 puts pressure on the bishop on d3 and uh, there are many moves you could play here but probably best for levon uh, would be to go king to h1 because now uh, let's say knight captures on d3 rook captures on e6 knight captures on f2 with check rook captures and now bishop captures on b2 okay it's 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 a nice position let's say queen captures on d5 threatens some very nasty discoveries king to h8 you can trade a pair of rooks here and now rook to f1 stopping any rook to e1 ideas and it's equal material uh, playable for both sides black is a little bit better uh because the position is um uh, more active and uh, it's uh, it's a bishop against a, a knight plus the the two against the one on the queen side so black is a little bit better but nothing too spectacular however in the game after knight to e5 uh levon played knight to d4 which uh, really uh complicates um uh things and he really wanted to uh, catch Nepo off guard but here Nepo shows just uh, how well prepared he is and how he's ready to take on Ding for the title of world champion so feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out the only winning idea for Nepo uh, in this position while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this incredible move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to h3. That's right. That's the move. And in order to spot this move, you really have to figure out uh, uh, everything that, that's happening here, which is uh, always the case when you play against uh, Levon Aronian. Uh, the idea of bishop to h3 comes to mind once you ask yourself uh, what happens if I play knight to f7 and attack the white queen. So once you ask yourself this, then you realize what Levon's idea was all along. Levon's plan was to give up the queen. That's what he wanted to do. And now after rook captures and knight captures on e6, the rook and queen are attacked. So queen to h6, you're going to pick up the other rook as well. And after queen captures, now you have two rooks for a queen. You also have the bishop pair and this is objectively winning for white because uh well the, the black king is just white in the open rook pair plus bishop pair uh there's just no defending this so uh, one, one way to do this is let's say rook to c7 and uh that's pretty much it there's not much you can try here bishop to c5 is coming if you try something like queen b8 then even bishop to b6 if, if you go back with with queen to f8 then even pawn to b4 now this will be a nice outpost for the bishop if bishop to d8 uh bishop to c5 if queen to h6 now you just play rook to e8 with check and that's it king g7 rook captures the knight is pinned um uh, instant resigns for, for for black and this is only one of the reasons uh, that uh, one of the possibilities that uh, could happen so this is what levon had in mind after knight to d4 but then nepo checked knight to f7 like we've just um, uh, did here and he played bishop to h3 and now uh checkmate is being threatened and now uh knight to f7 is a grave threat uh because there's only one good way to uh, to stop this there uh, bishop to f1 this stops checkmate but now look at this knight to f7 attacks the queen and uh, how do you reply to this the knight on d4 is hanging it's attacked twice by the queen and by the bishop so you have to play uh queen captures on d5 or queen captures on f4 
uh, to defend the knight on d4, but it doesn't help you uh, because one of the defenders is the bishop on f2 and next move also rook captures on e1 is happening. So that's uh, that's the unfortunate thing here for Levon. There is one thing you could try uh, knight to e6, but let's not forget about our good friend the bishop on h3, uh, also helping with the defense of the uh, the uh, e6, e e6 square. So there's really not, not, not much point in doing that. So here a queen captures on d5 was played now rook captures on e1 and now bishop captures on e1 bishop captures on d4 with check king to h1 and now bishop back to c8 and now after all is said and done nepo is just up a full piece as you can see both players have a queen rook and bishop pair uh, but nepo also has a knight so uh unless uh levon is ready to beat nepo being a piece down uh this is a now uh, completely winning for uh, for nepo so bishop to c4 levon of course will try everything uh, he did go into this round as the leader of the tournament and he would very much like not to lose the game but it's just too much material rook e8 goes after the bishop bishop to b4 and here we have queen to f6 we have bishop to d3 uh, uh nepos king is still wide in the open so it, perhaps it's possible to to attack the king but it's not going to be easy because here the move that um, uh, nepo plays is absolutely spectacular and that is bishop to c3 uh, uh mind-blowing move uh blocks the bishop's defense of the e1 square now you're threatening rook to e1 checkmate and there's no good way uh, to, to capture uh because uh uh, you, you either allow some captures or or you allow checkmate. So here he did play bishop captures on c3, but now Nepo just plays queen captures on c3. It removes the defender of the e1 square once again. So you cannot capture because, well, like we said, if you capture, it's just a check. Bishop covers in checkmate. So here g4 was played uh, by Levon, but now just queen back to f6. You've eliminated even more material from the board. So now being up a knight is even more spectacular. Rook to c7 was played uh, trying to pile up on that knight but it's nothing really rook to e1 with check we have king to g2 bishop to e6 now we have queen to h5 going after that h7 pawn uh, but now just queen captures on b2 with check king h3 levon putting everything up for this uh, one attack uh, but just pawn to h6 uh, that stops the attack king uh, queen to g6 now not moving the king but actually queen to g7 even though you could play king to f8 it's still perfectly winning for black uh, we have king to h4 and now rook to h1 and it was in this position that uh levon had enough and also it was in this position that uh, levon arunyan resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here uh one way the game could continue is okay you have to either push h3 or defend the pawn but it doesn't really matter you can just trade here and you are very very happy with this end game knight g5 check let's say king g2 rook to d1 and uh there's no defense rook to d2 check followed by knight captures on f3 are coming and th th there's just no good way to stop this you can uh, very easily pile up on that pawn and if you try something like h4 like we said rook to d2 check king to f1 knight captures on f3 eliminates the pawn and now the king is completely paralyzed here on the f1 square rook and knight doing good work here and next you will see bishop captures and bishop to h3 and this will be checkmate it's only one of the ways this could um, uh, continue uh, but uh, th there's uh, no point in continuing because Levon knows that Nepo will definitely find all of this so truly a remarkable game and it's uh, it's uh, really wild that uh, Levon tried to, uh, to uh, call, uh, call the, uh, the arbiter to um, uh, rule a threefold repetition but it wasn't because bishop to d8 only happened twice and then he played uh, after this knight if i move he played this knight to d4 which is just absolutely spectacular for first for nepo to find bishop to h3 and then uh, i mean w once you see it of course it, it it all makes sense but first to, to actually spot this uh you have to try why, what happens after knight to f7 he, it, once you see knight to f7 doesn't work and this is exactly what levon wanted you to play then you find bishop bishop to h3 and that's exactly what happened in the game so maybe uh levon uh just uh, thought that this was his tournament everything was going his way and he was going to you know uh crush the world chess championship challenger yeah and okay it's different to, uh, maybe i shouldn't call him world chess championship challenger as he's not challenging the world champion he will only play the world chess championship match against ding Luren. Uh, but yeah, he, he thought that he, he he will win this one and that it's going to be a great day for him. Unfortunately, that's not what happens. He still remains in the lead of the tournament. Gukesh uh, uh, caught up to him, uh, but it could still be a, a, a great tournament for him. This is only a one, one 
uh, you know, uh, uh, well, a hiccup uh, along the way. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, really awesome stuff by Jan. We'll see uh, how he continues the tournament. And uh, of course, we are all very much looking forward to his match against Dean Liren. Uh, I would like to thank Joyce Roseman, Bernice Dean, and Nadine Walton, Gordon Hatfield, and Claude Huber for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and do check out the previous video if you haven't it's really a, a wild one uh, see you soon